Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where it's about TV shows of the supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Trickster. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, we have Jarrett kind of, you know, still processing everything he learned last episode from, you know, Wade, his dad. And now it's a situation of, okay... So, Wade's still not filling him in on everything, but it's like, hey, you gotta lay low, Georgina and the others, so, well, he only he's only aware of Georgina, he's not even aware that there are others until, like, much later in the episode, but it's like, just lay low, just kind of relax, which I even love it, because at points throughout the episode, it's like, aren't both of you a little too relaxed about this situation, where he's just kind of out and about, well, so is Jared at one point in time, but it's like, Jared's like, where are you? He's like, and then immediately Wade hangs up, and then it's like, hard cut to him in the strip club, I'm like, really? You're being hunted, and so is your son, because he says, like, people like Georgina hunt tricksters, and it's like, why? He's like, that's the way it's always been, but once again, they talk about later on, tricksters, half-truths and lies, so it's like, we don't really know for sure, like, you know, the validity to, you know, what he was, well, 100% of the validity to everything he said so far, but, um, I mean, the way he makes it seem like later on, it's like, oh, I'm in this, um, situ, I'm, like, out and about, I'm at the strip club, because I was, I wanted you to find me, um, we even got little hints to the past throughout the episode, you know, about their past. Because cause at one point, Wade had told Jarrett, like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I've had hundreds of kids. And it's like, you know, but for him, it's like, he even said it, like, being a trickster is hereditary. Uh, he doesn't know about being a witch, but being a trickster is one. But he's like, none of my other kids have been tricksters. So there's no guarantee. He's like, it takes, it could take weeks, maybe months, you know, to ever find out if you really are one. And that's a big if, you know. What the big thing I'm wondering about is he never told Jared whatever happened to the rest of you, what happened to your kids. Well, essentially, my siblings were they whatever happened to them because it's like how old are you and it's like he didn't really go into the specifics of that and they they're being very vague about the time frame because we get a look at the past and because even at one point in the episode we see like a younger Wade but at what point you know we saw like two different periods in time him when he was maybe like a teenager maybe and then another one when he kind of looks the way he does now but we still don't know like how long ago that was. Because, uh, so him and Georgina, Georgina specifically, have definitely known each other for a while. I'm assuming the, the same applies to the others as well. But it's like, you're supposed, he's supposed to open a doorway, but he doesn't, he chooses not to. And it's like, why is that? Because part of me was wondering, like, okay, so that whole, were you about to sacrifice Jared? Like, is that what he does? Is he sacrifices children before, uh, the ritual, I'm a little all over the place because I'm trying to figure certain things out. Like, for example, we learned about the ritual at the very end of the episode, but I'm like, is that what he was trying to, like, prevent from happening? Or was he trying to take Jared away to kind of raise him? Because because he makes it seem like he didn't know that Jared was one, and he made it seem like, eh, it's not hereditary. So I guess he thought, like, oh, this is just going to be another one that's not. Or maybe the whole point is to kill them before they can become tricksters to complete the ritual. You know, it's unclear, because only him and Maggie know about what happened 17 years ago, so they still haven't told Jared about, like, oh yeah, Wade was trying to take you away. Do I know what he was planning? No, the only person who will ever know the truth is Wade, but it, I would assume, because I, I, my immediate thought was, maybe tricksters have to sacrifice their kids once again, we don't know, I mean, we don't know the time frame of all the different kids he's had. Because the last time him and Georgina met, he was like, I, sub, since we last met, I've lived a whole bunch of lifetimes. So it's not like, so it doesn't seem like she was around 17 years ago. I mean, if she would, she would have known about Jared. So so I wonder if Jared, the most recent kid he's had subsequently since he last ran into Georgina, maybe he didn't. Maybe, he, you know, he something was special about Maggie and he fell for her. I wonder, did he know that she was a witch at the time or not? I mean, obviously we know now he knows, but maybe when she tried to kill him before is when he was like, oh, that's when he probably found out she was a witch or you never know. Maybe he knew ahead of time and that's why he wanted Jarrett to be born because it's like, oh, you're, you're, you know, a special case because even Georgina says it later on, like a witch, like he's basically essentially this world's version of a hybrid because he's a witch and a trickster, you know, so what that necessarily means, we still know, don't know, but it seems like none of them know, because it seems like this is unknown territory for all of them. But um, the reason why I initially was still thinking along the same lines of like, oh, like they must have to sacrifice, he must have to sacrifice his son or something, is the context if he was like, 
you saw it, but you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to live with it. So I was like, oh, like having to like kill your kid or something like that. Because I was like, is that like the necessary key to open the portal or something like, because it seemed like it was like, you need to open like this doorway. So, but he kept, I guess, refusing to, because it's like, we need to go back home. You've kind of forgotten yourself trickster. And I was like, it was something along those lines that I was like, okay, so you're from a different world, obviously. Like, I guess you're, I, my initial thought too is because Georgina was like, because at, during a, at the strip club, she grabbed Wade's hand and like, it sent something through him and he passed out. He was like, it was like a thousand cats well, being like killed or something like that is what he was kind of referencing. Like it being this shrieking pain. And it's like, was it a spell you put on me? And there were, one of them was like, we're not, we don't, wasn't a spell. We're communicators. And it's basically, we were letting you hear what, what the land had to say. So I was like, okay. So I started thinking like, maybe they're kind of similar to like, not necessarily exactly wood nymphs, but maybe there's something of that nature where they're, they commune with, well, nature. And which is interesting because I was like, beings like that, considering everything that's going on, you know, in the town and everything, you know, the, you know, the pipeline and stuff that, you know, Obviously, like I said, it's continuing to be this like background thing, but maybe it plays more of a role than you kind of give you like I figured like it probably plays a bigger role than maybe we'd even realize. But it's like for her, it's like, why do you even want to stay here? Because, you know, it's like he's like, oh, me wanting to live. I wonder why. And it's like, but it's. So so that to me solidifies like maybe he doesn't never he didn't want to take the chance any of his kids would grow up to not be that his one of his kids would grow up to be tricksters to complete the ritual so it is a situation of it kind of seems like he is trying to he's been selfish about it and trying to prolong his own life for whatever reason i mean understandably considering like obviously we find out that the end you know it's fun, you know i've been talking around it but you know obviously the ritual of like a trickster son has to kill his father trickster father it's a rite of passage and it seems like maybe he's been avoiding it for all those hundreds of kids he's probably been killing all of them to avoid that because it's like which is very selfish in his own right but once again he said he made it seem like oh there's no guarantee but I, like so was he killing those kids i mean i say that but like there's no guarantee that he has killed them but it's like where was he going to go with jared was he going to kill jared or was he going to try and raise jared on his own it's like oh this is my trick this is my son but then what about the other kid? Like, there's still so many damn questions that, you know, it's like you can't necessarily get a straight answer out of Wade, you know? I think it's an interesting aspect to this episode, and we've seen it kind of continue these past two episodes. It's like the whole element of, like, Jarrett trying to discover himself with the whole Wade thing while, like, Maggie is getting close to her mom again and obviously them kind of not necessarily burying the hatchet but kind of confronting a lot of their past issues because Maggie kind of found out from a young age what she was it's like yeah like I know what I don't really practice much she's like a few hexes protection spells here and there all the stuff that you taught me it's like yeah her mom was like I you were five years old when I kind of saw what you were you that you had the gift and it's like yeah and then that's around the time you started smacking me around and for her her mom isn't trying to justify it. She's just saying, like, she went through a lot of shit. Like, kind of a lot of who she was. Her identity. Her virginity. Her her culture. Like, was all sh kind of stripped away from her. And in her own way, it's like, I did that because I didn't want you to ever use your medicine in front of people. I didn't want you to ever reveal what you are in front of people. So it's kind of like at a young age, I had to like, when you were so young, I had to kind of ingrain it in you, not in the best way possible. But also, she was dealing with her own stuff at the time too. Like, you know, it, it seems like it's not until these past 10 years that she's kind of fully dealt with a lot of her issues. So, but it's, you know, even Maggie's like, whoa, so was that for my protection? It's like, no, I just wanted to make you you know, it was, it was her, it was a harsh way of kind of preparing her for the world, being like, the world is kind of a nasty place, and I wanted you to be prepared for it, which it also seems like that's what Wade wants to do, he's like, I need to prepare Jared for what's to come, you know, so, I, I don't know, I mean, because it makes sense, considering Wade, as we saw, Wade had to kill his own dad, you know, so there is truth to the whole ritual situation, but, now it makes sense, like, why he's so cool, why he has to prepare Jared. It's not the easiest thing to kill your dad. Not only just kill him, live with it, too. It's not the easy. I mean, because he's lived many, many different lifetimes, so he still had to carry that his entire life. And even now, it's not like that, that lays easy when his heart it still weighs on him. And it's like, 
if Jarrett's going to be like me. I mean, because we don't know, like, him being half trickster and half witch, like, whether that makes him kind of, like, almost like that, like in that demigod range of, like, maybe he can age up to a certain point. Because we see that Wade kind of stopped at one point. So it's, like, maybe because Jarrett's only half trickster, maybe that's still enough to give him some form of, quote-unquote, immortality. Or maybe it's more so... Uh, the witch side kind of makes him a little more human, so it's like, oh, I can age and die. We don't know. Don't fully know how that whole situation works. Because, you know, demigods still can live for a long time, I, I think. I think they still have some... Well, I th maybe it's not a form of immortality, but more so, like, they age slower than normal humans, so it seems like they have a form of immortality when in actuality, you know? Maybe it's kind of similar in that thing. I, I don't know. I'm sure even the definition of a demigod, like, you know... What that necessarily translates as can range depending on the mythology and also, you know, what what the story calls for. Because I'm sure pe people warp mythology all the time to kind of fit the needs they need for the sake of the story, you know? What I also thought was kind of an interesting thing was um, Maggie's mom was saying, like, not to kind of use their magic for per their uh, medicine for personal gain, which I was like, that's interesting. I mean, that's always the thing about you never want to use magic for personal gain anyway. They, they always make a point of that. But they even I almost making it seem like there might be consequences for doing that. Now, what those necessary consequences are, we don't know. That's why she was kind of reluctant. She was like, let's just capture Wade. Let's not go through the whole killing thing. Because even asking, like, you know, because... Uh, Maggie was like, well, the first time I killed Wade, she was like, I didn't know how I did it. Just like, I would just feel with so much anger. And her mom was like, yeah, that's what 500 years of, uh, colonism, uh, will do to you, which is like, huh? So was that kind of just like in that moment, just like the history and just like all that ancestral rage just kind of came out through her. Like she summoned it in that. because I think it makes sense. Cause it's like, you know, it's like what has happened to their people, like over like not just back then but kind of generation after generation you know and i think still even to a certain extent this day because i mean i you know that's a world i'm unfamiliar with like you know indigenous people what they have to live with and go through on like a daily basis to kind of reclaim what's theirs you know so i don't know i don't know if what I, what I'm saying is maybe in that moment it's almost like way taking away your son like maybe like the ancestral like powers that be or you know spirits kind of like in tune with her because it's like no we know what that's like get back your child and that's where that came from I, I know she like I said maybe she tapped into some like ancestral pool of like spirits and energy in that moment I don't know she makes it seem like she hasn't been able to do it since but it's just like it was just like a heat of the moment thing it's not like something she actively did it was nice to have um Jared and Sarah kind of make up a little bit because she's like yeah sorry I kind of butted my nose in your business she's like I kind of have a habit of doing it but he's like no I'm actually glad you did I'm really glad you had invited my dad and everything because it's like now because of that he now knows the truth to kind of about I mean it actually helped him out a lot it, it kind of explained a lot of the stuff crazy stuff that's been happening lately that he couldn't explain but um it's like, oh, she finds out that he was the one making the pink pills. He's like, it's not that hard. She's like, no, it kind of makes you kind of something special to be. It's not like any average Joe can do it. And you're no average Joe. There was also that moment where they were kind of showing scars. Because at first she didn't want Jared to see her arms. And I was like, I, I, I was like, no, I wasn't really. I was, I caught my thought immediately went like, oh, the scars you're talking about. A little different from Jared's. And she shows her arms and she's got a lot of small cuts. I was like, I... They didn't go into specifics, but the way Jarrett looks at her, you kind of feel like, oh, those are probably most likely self-inflicted, sadly, you know? But then, like, they start making out, but then, like, he's seeing, like, the fireflies and stuff again, and then she's looking up almost like, wait, what? He's like, what? You Wait, you can see it this time? But they keep going, and then the scene transitions where it's like, they're outside in the woods doing their thing, and you're like, holy, okay, so... Maybe, so Sarah isn't, maybe just as Jarrett's coming into what he is, maybe on some level Sarah is too, because I forgot they brought it up, like, obviously, 
she's looking for her real parents. And Jared even said like, yeah, you know, it's like looking at her fate. It's like, yeah, you're going to go to the city. You're going to find your parents. You're going to have purple hair. I'm like, he's saying that jokingly, but that they made specific. They said it's so specific that you're like, he said that, but maybe there's going to be some truth to that. But maybe like Sarah's coming into whatever she is and that moment, them kind of like, like, like I said, for all we know, maybe a similar thing happened between Maggie and Wade back in the day, you know, so that shows maybe Sarah's actually a witch too, or maybe something else entirely. We don't know. I would, you know, because what's interesting though is, uh, well, because now, now it makes you wonder. Because remember that creature we saw? Like, I'm, we've been under the assumption that it was like Georgina and one of them. Like, what if in actuality it was Sarah? Like, what if Sarah is one of them? Well, as we found out, they're ancients. But maybe I'm just over thinking and maybe she's not an ancient maybe she, I, I don't know I'm, I'm curious to say, but it just it feels especially because she saw what he saw it could have just been maybe something of him as a trickster or maybe him as a witch kind of like translating over in that moment where like they kind of a, a union of sorts as she even says later on jokingly like oh you're a bad influence but it's like maybe he did have some influence over her in that moment of which is interesting because he also had that dream where like obviously he saw like his buddy and her looking at him kind of scowling so I'm wondering is that in reference to like Eventually, like, what, what, maybe that was some foreshadowing of some scene. Like, maybe it was like a dream trying to tell him something, you know. Um, obviously, your dreams, there is something to them that it they can be kind of visions of potentially the future. But it's like them whispering, like, maybe it's because obviously his buddy, like, finds out what weight is at the end. Of, or at least it, his buddy ain't normal at the end of the episode. But also, like, Richie was there. He was like, oh, about him being a snitch. and Because he was in a, uh orange, you know, uh, jail uniform. But then there was also the whole Wade and Maggie hooking up again. And it's like, well, I think maybe that's all supposed to insinuate. Like, well, there's still something there between them, maybe. Once again, reading potentially reading too much into it. But, um... What I also thought was kind of a trippy part of the episode is when, like, he kept trying to call his mom and she was texting him, like, what do you want? Like, chill the fuck out. But then we hard cut back and forth because it's like Maggie's, like, out there trying to get a signal, but she can't. So it's like, who the hell was texting him? And then later on, he meets up with his buddy. He's like, yo, call my mom. It's like, what number you got for her? It's like, whoa, it's different. Who changed the number? And I'm like, well, I'd assume it. I don't think. I don't think it was, um... Sarah, I'd assume, like, it was Wade, because so, I was like, I guess Wade's the one that, like, did that, because I guess he doesn't want him to get in contact, because he said, like, I'm looking for your mom, it's like, I guess he wanted to get in contact with Maggie first, before Jared could, you know, for, for whatever re reason, I guess, but, um, I don't, I, I don't know what to 100% make of that. But um, at the same time, there's the whole situation with Maggie and her mom using the spell to call Wade and they're able to, you know, but immediately, like, Georgina's like, he's under a spell. I think we found ourselves a witch, which they even talk about later on. It's like, oh, when's the last time we saw a witch? 61 years ago. It's like, wow, it's so crazy. It's like, no, no, no. Georgina's like, sit down, sit down. We got to talk. Uh, which Wade's like, no, don't talk to him. You don't want to listen to him. Because I thought was interesting the moment Wade got there, he was like, is Jarrett here? And it's like, why would he be? And then later on, it makes sense. It's like when Jarrett shows up, it's like, he's like, no, I called him here. And it's like, why would you? <gasps> right. The spell attracts tricksters. So for Jarrett to be pulled there, it it means he's he is a trickster. Which is interesting because we have essentially the this world's trifecta. Um, in that one room because at least the way Georgina explains it that basically there's a balance and each one is she's like we used to be like family like all three of us you know witches ancients tricksters that they kind of acted as a sort of balance in this world and I guess that balance has subsequently been knocked off base because I guess Wade hasn't been doing his duties as a trickster he's kind of been living his own life and not fulfilling his duties I, what what that necessarily entails I don't know um, but obviously Maggie's just like, no, like, stay away from my son, but like, you know, so she ends up shooting them, granted, they're not going to die, because those are just skin suits, literal skin suits they're wearing, but in that moment, I guess the shock of it all, it just becomes too much, and Jarrett's powers kick in, and he starts shifting into a bird, once again, freaks his friend out, later on his friend's like, oh, you're back to normal? Yeah, you can catch a ride with your mom, dude, I, I, I gotta go, so it's like, he's in panic mode, but, um, that's what I thought was interesting. It's like, so I was like, they can shape shift into other things because obviously Wade's turned into other people, including Jarrett. But I was like, 
maybe birds are their main i mean it makes sense because birds are like you know a, you know a mobile creature but i also wonder is that like what they fully represent is that the representation of tricksters in that you know mythology because you know i, I bring up you know in J japanese mythology you know foxes being the tricksters i mean you see that with naruto like the nine tails is a trickster so I'm wondering is that what that is because like he's so, like it's not like he intentionally went there but he started transforming it seems like that's the first form you manifest as a trickster is a bird we even saw it with a younger way when he was coming into his trickster powers he was turning into uh well I think they're not crows I think they're ravens but maybe that's why like, that's kind of like their go-to form and then afterwards it's like oh you can turn in other stuff but that will always be your base because they or that maybe in that in this mythology, you know, uh, ravens are seen as the tricksters, you know, so maybe that's what that's supposed to manifest itself as. But um, a lot kind of thrown at, you know, obviously, because Wade was like, yeah, I literally didn't want to explain all this ritual stuff to you like an hour after you find out what you really are, you know, so but even Maggie being like, well, thanks for telling the truth. It better be the whole truth. But it's like. I mean, the, what we saw at the end, like I said, him killing his dad shows that it is. But what was interesting, though, is we saw at the end, like, there was a ritual taking place and an ancient was summoned in, and it was Georgina. So that's what he was referencing when he was like, yeah, you saw it, but you didn't have to do it. You didn't have to live with it. So, and now, and because Georgina looks the way she does, like, it seems like the skin is, like, finally falling apart. But it seems like she's had that skin for God knows how long. So now I'm like, oh, so I thought you just like recently got that skin and now he's falling apart. But it's like, I guess because they've been in this world the entire time and not gone back because he's refused to open the door maybe the entire time. Because she's like, why do you even want to stay in this world? This world's disgusting. It's diseased. But um, now that maybe that's what those other skin suits are about. Maybe it's for the others. But part of me is like, maybe they're trying to get more ancients to like they want to go home, but also uh, you know be able to like open that doorway. So maybe it isn't just about going home. Maybe it's about bringing others through. Um, once again, there is some kind of supposed to be balance to all of this. So uh, I don't know. Um, like I said, every time we get some answers, it just comes back with like even more questions about like what's really going on here and. Only Georgina, her crew, and Wade have all the answers, but it doesn't seem like they're giving them all up. So, also, Wade's almost, oh, I forgot, Jared's also got the shock of grandma because, oh, yeah, his grandma, she, her, his mom told him his grandma died some years ago because she just kind of up and disappeared 10 years ago. And it's like, she figured it'd be easier to explain that she's dead. So that's why, like, it's like, oh, yeah, and the next year you sent him like a birthday card or something like that. And it was like, wait, he, thought you came back from the dead or something. But now it's, you know, and it's like, I, I'm guessing he really did think she was still dead the entire time. It's like, like, wait, grandma? So, family reunions upon family reunions. So much complicated stuff happening at once. I'm really interested to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.